There you are. Right, we're, guys, we're on record now, so we're going to guess we, we, we're getting started. So I ju I've just got to, uh, that's good. Oh, you're looking good. Garth, you're looking very good. You're looking quite, quite dapper online. So today we're doing the uh, Le Leotoli and the Haysborough footprints. Um, so we're going to be going deep into prehistory and we've got some really nice images. So uh, are you, is it coming across loud and clear with you guys? Yeah. Broadband um, playing up a little bit. Well, you do live in Wick. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I gotta be honest. Th this is why Goff moved to. Um, this is why Goff moved to Lanswick Major because he better internet reception. Wish that was true. All <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. At least he's got a butcher's. <laughs> <laughs> what in in Wick? <laughs> <laughs> no, in Lantwit. Yeah, well, and, and it's got a Greg's. And it's got a principality. Um, and the, the big question is, is there any banks left in Lantwit? Uh, no. Well, uh, no, I don't think there is. No. There is in Wick. <laughs> or not in Wick. There, uh, there is. There's Lloyd's. In Lloyd's Lantwit. still so, there. Oh, yeah, of course yeah. it is. Yeah. Lloyd's it's still, still there, is it? Yep. Yeah. It's open yeah. on a, I think Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or something like that. Oh right, oh, Tuesday. Oh right, okay, fair enough. So um, I'm just this. It's all setting up now, so we're just uh, just doing one last thing. Right. So, <coughs> any news? Any news from you, Henry, this week, my darling? Uh, something. Something caught my eye. Uh, they've found the fossilized molar in a cave in France that they've dated back to 54,000 years. Is, is this going to be? Did you say a molar? Yeah, a human molar fr from a child. Ah, nice. So, as in Homo sapiens sapien or Homo sapien Neanderthal, which one? Yes. Uh, yeah, modern, modern, modern hominid. Yeah? yeah. Oh, your broadband. So we have basically a, a modern hominid in the cave. That's that's uh that's pretty that's pretty uh interesting in that we we you coming across more and more sets of evidence of hominid remains across the planet, basically. Um can I just share a little story with you, which which I've which I've never I, shared before, and you know I'm gonna share it. I might I might shut my video down because the broadband is getting quite weak at this end. As long as we can hear your voice, that's good. I, I was, I I ran um, a research project in Cyprus. This was in 1993, and the village that we stayed in, which was a place known as Anoira Village, there was this chap in the village uh, who was very much um, interested in in what we were doing. It was an archaeological research project, and he, when he was a child, he used to go in lots of different caves within the village that we were staying in when he was a child so this guy's now 65 70 uh, so 60 odd years ago he was finding all these artifacts and uh, he, he would just describe these big teeth and various interesting things he was finding in the caves but obviously this is when he was a child um, and we don't know anything more than that but the, the prehistory is really coming on and our understanding of our prehistoric ancestors as we've been seeing over the past few weeks has been growing and growing and growing. So it's always good to have new information. So today, what I'd like to do is, is look at the Latoli footprints in Africa, in Tanzania. Latoli footprints themselves date back to 3.7 million years ago. But then we look at some footprints that might date back as far, amazingly enough, not quite sure on this, because most of the dating is 800,000 years ago, but as far back as a million years ago, off the coast, the east coast of England, at a place called Haysborough. We also look at Pigfield, and that's also um, the east of England. So we've got a nice little bit of a comparison today. Uh, I would like to uh, finish, I would like to finish earlier today as well, uh, but so we'll have a very, very short break indeed. But... 
Um, I haven't asked Goff. Have you got any news, Goff? No, I, I saw that about the turtle. I, I must be confused because I thought they found a, um, a, a, a Neanderthal tooth in the era of the um, Homo sapiens. And uh, it proved that um, they'd lived together for 50,000 years in, alongside one another. I mean, but maybe I got the information. No, no, what? Oh, okay, we've got a bit of doubt on this. Do you know what we're going to do? We're going to we're going to look. Um, we're going to we're going to type this in now. Let, let's just try and get the facts. Let's do it. So we, it would be really interesting if we can just um, do some fact finding on this. So I'm going to go with. So this is in the past few days. Yes. Yeah. So you both know what this tooth looks like, so we don't need to see an image of it on the screen. So if I type in tooth found in French cave, tooth found in French cave, let's see what it says. Ah, right, yeah, I've got it straight away. There's some really nice images, actually, that I've got on my computer screen, not on my iPhone. So do you know what we're going to do? We're going to read out this article in full. It was in the Daily Mail. And actually, um, no word of no word. This is a tiny tooth, very, very, very small tooth indeed. And it's one single tooth. And the headlines are exceptional. Ah, no, it's far older than you two said. Exceptional, five hundred and sixty thousand, five hundred and sixty thousand year old tooth. Now. This is very different than both what both of you said, right? I'm just it. Uh, I'm just going to go with um, a date on this. Um, for this, ah, no, this is from 2018, so I've got the wrong article, right? Which is rather interesting. I've got the wrong article straight away. So what we're going to do? Very interesting. We're going to actually read this story from 2018, and then we're going to come on to your story. So exceptional, a tooth found from. 560,000 years ago. This was also found in France. And this is believed to um, relate to a Homo heidelbergensis. And this tooth actually comes from a five-year-old child. And Hobo, Homo heidelbergensis is a hominid that we have already mentioned. And this is from a cave along the Pyrenees and a cave called the Arago Cave. Um, and they've had lots of other pieces of evidence from that cave. So what we're going to do now, we're going to look at the new find. Do you know what? When when things are in newspapers and um, you, know, you, you type them in line, like I've just done, I've, I've gone down a little rabbit warren, but it's been very, very helpful. So what we need to do, I need to find... Um, a, a tiny tooth, BBC 2000. So you say it's been found. Ah, right, here we go. I think I've got it. 15 hours ago. Let's see if it's this one. It's talking about it's talking about a it's talking about a child's tooth here. Um right, okay, let's just see if it is this one. Right, yeah, you're right, you are right. So another tooth found in um, a cave um from the Rhone Valley. This is in southern France. So beautiful image of a cave here. So a tiny tooth unearthed from a French cave. This is dating from February the 9th, 2022. This is the one. Is upending what we know about early humans, right? Let's upend this. Let's see what it says. This is, again is a child's tooth. Both of them in these two cases from 2018 and this one, a, a children's teeth, both from France. Child's tooth unearthed from a French cave has revealed the earliest evidence of homo sapiens living in western europe so these are homo sapiens sapiens modern sort of pure hominids but we know that a modern pure hominid um, is a mixture of all these other hominids so this dates back to fifty-four thousand years ago and is actually a tooth that as you were right in saying goff is at the time when neanderthals were clearly in in greater numbers in europe so what's more, the Homo sapien, sapien tooth was sandwiched between layers of Neanderthal remains. 
showing that the two groups of humans coexisted in the region. I couldn't have asked for a better introduction from you, Goff and, and uh, Henry. So what we got, we got Neanderthal remains in a lower layer. We got um, Homo sapiens sapiens remains above that. And above that, you've got Homo, Homo uh, sapiens Neanderthal remains there. So it's great. So you are right about that. So in other words, you've got a wave of um, Neanderthals, um, Homo sapiens sapiens, and you've got the Neanderthals again. And, and there's, that's obviously proof that another piece of the jigsaw saying that they were, they were aware of each other, obviously. These findings challenge the narrative that the arrival of Homo sapiens in Europe triggered the extinction of Neanderthals. Not so, because the Neanderthals come back in the cave. I love this. And this is what I'm annotating from this. We've often thought that the arrival of modern humans in Europe led to the pretty rapid de demise of Neanderthals. Never thought that. But this is new evidence suggesting that both the appearance of modern humans in Europe and the disappearance of Neanderthals is much more complex than that. It's the first time archaeologists have found evidence of alternating groups of Homo sapiens sapiens and Neanderthals living in the same space. Very interesting. Does this say that the, do you know what, I love, I love stirring the pot. Does this say that the Neanderthals um, wiped out the Homo sapiens sapiens that lived in that cave? Or more that they coexisted? Very interesting. Um, so, so basically there's, there's this, this moving around of human populations, which is great. It used to be believed from evidence from Italy and Bulgaria and, and Spain, for example, that we've got Homo sapiens around um, 43,000 years ago, um, and slowly but surely the Neanderthals get less and less in number. But we do have evidence from Gibraltar, for example, um, that we do find evidence that Neanderthals um, as a pure breed still about 23,000 years ago. Very, very interesting this. Humans and Neanderthals, who we know from genetic analysis, encountered one another and had babies. Why not? resulting in Neanderthal traces in our DNA overlap for a much longer period in Europe. And I love this, I love this as well. They found ancient tools across this valley associated with Homo sapiens and Neanderthals. Um, and there's this idea that the one thing about, I, I gotta mention something else as well. This is also about human populations, which would be very interesting. Uh, the suit is deposited um, to the roof of the rock shelter uh, and when there was a period of no one living there, there's no suit, depos suit deposition. And the way that we know that, because um, there's a type of patina in, there's a type of um, um, covering um, within the caves. So um, as as the um, as the um, minerals um, create in the cave um, from water flow, from the stalagmites and the stalactites, the calcites and, and all the rest of it that form these, uh, what you usually find is a layer of suit um, and the layer that nobody was in the cave over that, another layer of suit, another layer of, of, of these minerals forming. So we know that. Interestingly enough, talking about this today, and we, we, that was, that's really, really good. We could talk more about that, but we could come to this in the near future. Very, very interesting. I'm going to type this in. I wasn't going to do this today, but we had a bit of news. Orkney women. Um, 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 settling. Now, this is a rather interesting one. I don't know if I can get, get this straight away. Um, here we go. Now, this is really, really interesting. Now, this changes the narrative again. Uh, um, Goff, when, when people talk about movements of people, do they talk usually talk about men or do they talk about women? Just a quick answer. Men, I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, that's really interesting. Right. Just a few days ago, uh, this came out with research going on in Orkney. They found that there was a, a mass immigration um, to, to the Orkney Islands in the Bronze Age by groups of women, not by groups of men. So that shoots the narrative in, in the face directly. What they're finding is that um, they're, they're looking at lineages uh, and they're thinking that um, it's not a lineage directly descended from the men coming onto the island, integrating with females. It's women coming onto the island, integrating with men. And that changes the narrative. You know, women can get um, 
Guff, I, I, I'm talking for myself. If, if women want a man, right, they will throw any woman out of the way. Have you ever come across that, um, uh, Guff, that a woman fought over you and it's usually the one who's a little bit more fiery that wins the argument? Have you ever come across that, Guff? Come on, being a man of the world you have, surely. Yes, that's right, yeah. Generally speaking, yeah. That, that's a really interesting point. I come across it with relationships over the years and spoken to women and they say, oh, I, I came across women and they say, oh, I was really keen on this bloke, right? And we were together and this other woman come along who, who seemed to have it all and she took him away from me. And this is what we're saying. Really interesting to watch that. We're talking about the Bronze Age, maybe 4,000 years ago. Interesting to look at that news. So we've done quite a lot of news actually today, which is fortunate and unfortunate because I, I've got quite a bit I want to go through today. So I'm deleting all this off my screen, so that that's fine. Um, and we've got, um, and what we are going to do, we're going to look at the Latoli footprints. So it would be very, very useful if we got some images on the screen. So let's have a nice little bit of a screen share there. Um, Right, share the screen, and hopefully this is going to come up. Do you know, Zoom um, Zoom sent me a message the other day, and it said, whatever you do, when you screen share, don't actually have any other windows open. Um, and I've actually learned from that because I've had account details open, and people have seen them, so we'll be very careful with that. So we've got these That's where I got my money from. Yeah, well, basically, I shared your bank details the other day, um, Henry. That's why you've got no money in your bank account. Right. Oh, anyway. That's the black account. Oh, oh the, the, the black account. OK, we won't do that one. Off the book. So, so, shut, shut. so basically, what we're looking at, we're going to look at these footprints. <clears throat> now, interestingly enough, it describes there are, there, are two set, there are two sets of footprints here, but there's a third set um and um but that that's something else we'll, we'll concentrate on the two sets of human footprints there in front of, front of us um and there's other little tracks around and you can see little tracks here you can see little tracks here you see all these little tracks wandering around the place now all these little tracks that you can actually see are from a number of other beasts that shared the landscape of latoli now the Natoli footprints were found four years after the death of Mary Leakey's husband. Now, she found these footprints in 1976. The Natoli footprints come from a region of um, Tanzania, Tanzania. And what we're going to do, we're going we're gonna to try and show you that locality here. A moment. Hang on. I did actually have it up on the screen. Um, it was up on the screen a moment ago. Let's just show you. Let's just show you the location of where we're talking about because it's always good to know where we're talking about. The Tolai um, location. Let's type that in there. Location. And here we go. There we go. There it is. So we're in Tanzania. We're near the Old Dubai Gorge, that Rift Valley. And Latoli. And what we've got is one, two, three locations of smaller volcanoes and um, the, Gorongo, the Gorongoro crater, which this is quite in a, an active vulcanized area. So there's our Latoli. There's where our footprints are. And do you know what I just come across? I come across a very interesting image when I type there in. Um, here we go. This this is basically um, the the Tolai footprints, and they, they are actually finding more of these footprints as well. So these are, these are some of the new Latoli footprints that they've been finding, and this is this is clearly showing one set there. But the Latoli footprints that we're gonna, you know, what I'd love to look at these ones to be honest with you, um, because around these footprints there is lots of other footprints, lots of other animal footprints. Love it. The original foot, 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 footprint found in 1976. And, um, and the, the one thing as well is, is that by the end of this, this, by the end of this um, lecture that I presented on Tuesday, 
I, I came up with a little bit of a regret. I basically said we've concentrated mainly on the human footprints today and we've ignored all the other footprints of all the animals that are to be found within this landscape. And you can see all the footprints. And, it, you know, if we, I've got a little bit of a list here, which we're going to go on to now. And we've not only got that basically um, uh, Australopithecines, um, Afarensis, and these dates from 3.7 million years ago. But what we do find, interesting enough, along with these other new footprints and the footprints that are going to actually go back to the original from 1976, we've got footprints of hyenas that shared the landscape with humans, wild cats that shared the landscape with humans, and all these other animals that shared the landscapes with the humans 3.7 million years ago, like baboons, wild boars, giraffes, gazelles, rhinos, several kinds of antelopes, a type of hippopotamus, a type of buffaloes, smaller types of elephants, hares, birds, and all sorts of other animals that shared this landscape with our Latoli, the um, Australopithecus afarensis, um, all those 3.7 million years ago. So let's just get back to the original screen. Let's get back to what originally Mary Leakey found. There it is. Now, the other footprints that we've actually just seen um, are um, not too far away from these. Um, and they're a, a set of footprints that were found in 2015. So it's great. So we've got those new footprints found in 2015, which is absolutely brilliant. What these footprints demonstrated was that the beings creating these footprints um, walked upright. They've actually walked upright. So we're going to have a look at a little, little bit of a, an image to sort of demonstrate that. So what, what we've got here, we've got two sets of these prints. Now we've got the smaller ones and we've got the bigger ones. Let's look at a little bit of height. And then we're going to go back. To, we're going to look at this image and what this means. So there we go. Modern hominid footprint above. And this is a human. Uh, uh, this is um, the Australopithecus afarensis footprint down at the bottom. Now, there we go. If we look at that, that footprint there, that footprint it, itself shows you uh, the footprint of, of a, a being that um, uses its toes more than the heel um, and the toes at the front equally. So a characteristic of a hominid is somebody that has displaced weight on both the heel and the front. There we go at the bottom, the heel and the front rather than most of the weight put at the front with the middle image. This is very, very important. So the two images, the top and the bottom, indicate a hominid presence. That means that we're bipedal. So if we go back to that other image, we go back to, um, that's the new, uh, actually those, those are the new prints, 2015. Um, so if we go back to this, you can see two sets of prints. Now the ones at the bottom of the picture um, now, we've got to be very, very careful that we do believe that they're male footprints, right? But they could equally be um, adult female footprints, but it's obviously somebody more mature. So the footprints at the bottom, the, the overall length of the footprints at the bottom um, is at least coming up to 22 centimetres in length. And the um, maximum length of the footprints above the other being at a maximum of about 19 centimeters in length. So the one above is smaller. They believe that they, the ones at the bottom were of a male and the ones alongside were either um, a, a female or, or, or a child, but we can't make that conclusion. However, if we presume that the ones at the bottom are of a full grown adult, maybe 20 years old about, um, from the displacement uh, the pressure placed onto the heel at the back. There we go. The heel at the back. And if we make this a bit smaller, the heel at the back, the one at the bottom there, um, and the toes at the front, uh, we've got an idea that the bigger footprints are of somebody of around 1.56 meters in height. And then the smaller footprint is of somebody no more than about... Um, uh, 1.3 1 um, um, meters in height. 
right? So obviously a smaller individual, if it is a female, that would make sense because females are usually smaller than men, even to today, unless you go to Russia where the women are a lot bigger. Um, and it's also the pace of the male, um, the, the pace of the bottom one, if we are presuming it's a male, it, it's just under half a meter pace. My pace is about uh, today, is around um, 1.8 meters because I do a quite a bigger pace. Uh, but the, the pace of the individual is, when I say 1.8 meters, oh, that's totally wrong, isn't it? It means I'm a giant. 0.8 meters, sorry, there's a bit more than a half a meter. So, so the pace of the ones at the bottom is of somebody that's doing a half a meter pace and the one above uh, is about a 30 centimeter pace. And basically the, the distance is about equal between the two. So, so we're getting an idea from the evidence of what's going on. So what we, what we would be good is just to go to that fantastic print with that chap standing there. He's actually got quite little feet, hasn't he, that, that gentleman there. Uh, they, they're going to make a cast. And the one thing is, well, is, is that the cast are actually, the, the footprints are actually still there. Um, they, and and they, it, would, it was found to be too precarious to actually move these. They thought they were going to damage them and all the rest of it. So they've actually left, left them there and they're protected. So the way this works is I mentioned the vulcanized activity earlier on. What we do believe is at some point in time, 3.7 million years ago, maybe on the 14th of August at 5.15 or somewhere like that, uh, 3.7 million years ago, there was a group of people, two, three people wandered across this landscape um, and there'd been lots of animal activity. Uh, there would there have been a drop down of tooth, volcanic ash, dropping across the landscape. Uh, it was probably um, it, it was it was probably a, a day or so later or something like that. And a day or so later, there had been a drop of moisture in the air and it moistened the ash, probably making it a little bit easier to walk across. It wasn't as hot as it had been the day earlier, so they walked across it. All the animals wandering across it probably liked the ash because it got rid of problems with their hooves and all the rest of it. So, so that's what's going on. And then strangely enough, after the sun come out then, a few hours later, as sun come out, it baked the ground, preserving all the footprints. And then there was another um, issue of vault organized activity, ash spewed across the landscape again, and the footprints were preserved forever. So these are the Latoli footprints, um, and they are 45 kilometers south of the Old Divide Gorge, alongside the vulcanized range, found by Mary Leakery in 1976. Now, you can imagine uh, what her husband would have felt in finding these footprints if he'd still been alive. So, alas, um, you know, Mary found them without Louis Leakey, but her son Richard Leakey would have been a, a, around. Louis Leakey died in 1972, but Mary, Mary and Louis worked as a seat team, and I'm and I'm sure that Mary was accompanied by her husband in spirit that day when they were found in 1976. The Latoli footprints. Now, can I just mention something about the Latoli footprints that's outside the box? Um, up until that point, we do know that we've got that, that we do know that we've got hominid remains, up to 20 hominid remains with, within the Rift Valley landscape. I think it's a little bit more than that, to be honest. Uh, but we, we've got uh, we've got all these different hominid remains, um, Homo hylopogensis. We've got um, 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 Australopithecines. We, we've got Homo erectus, Homo habilis. Remember, habilis is a name given by Louis to a type of hominid that, 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 that had been found a, um, a decade or so earlier. Um, one of the things we, we were finding the bones and the evidence and, and the axes, the, the axes were what, what brought the Leakey family, um, thanks to some German scientists, finding the axes very much earlier on when Tanzania was, was old um, um, African um, East, um, East um, uh, God, what was it called? Um, East Africa, German East Africa, um, back before the sec uh, First World War, before the First World War. Thanks to Germans, they found these axes. So the Leakies had the axes as well, back on flow. Really lost my flow there. 
so what you had, you had the axes and the bones, but we 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 had no idea what how how tall these creatures were really, and we, we, we didn't really know that. So what 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 we've got because of the footprints, we can tell so much more, and and also. Um, we do know a little bit about the animals that existed, but did they exist at the same time as hominids? But now the footprints of these other animals would have been created exactly at the same time that these human footprints are being created as well. And within within moments, you know, when I when I jest and um, I can remember um, Ellen, who, who used to come to our uh, Lancet major classes, when I used to say something happened on the 14th of October. In the year 4 BC at 1215, she would always write the 14th of October 1215 down. That might have been joking aside. However, one day we might be able to work out the precise moment, the day that these were created. And I'm not jesting there. And the day that these were created alongside these other animals wandering across this landscape as well. Um, and again, some of these, you can you can just imagine that some of the, the human footprints were created before the animal footprints and other uh, moments before, and then an hour later, other animals went across the landscape. Um, then it got really hot, wow. Um, and then there was volcanized activity and they're preserved forever. Somebody, somebody asked me a question on Tuesday. Right. So the footprints actually give identity to these beings more than the bones um, and, and, and more than the tools, really, it, because these footprints are um, footprints that they're, they're, they're they, they, they tell us a lot more. It's really difficult to put this across because they are footprints and we take it for granted. Footprints in the muds. Somebody said to me, they said um, because it was the Arnside class on Tuesday. Some somebody they, they said oh they said Carl well um Carl what if I went to the muds at Morecambe Bay now yeah and I walked across would those footprints be preserved there forever and the answer by me was no right so they, she said well how can how can I if I was very vain and I said you are very vain by suggesting this um. If I was very vain, how could my footprint impressions be preserved forever? And my answer was, um, I think one in a, I think my answer was something like one in a trillion chance that your footprints will be preserved forever. One in a trillion. I think I, those were the words I, I, I used. Um, and when you think about it, there's seven billion people on the planet today, um, maybe one day some human footprints created other than in concrete because that's cheating folks right but co concrete doesn't actually preserve footprints very well actually um if you've ever experimented putting a concrete path there and um and it's just the chances of this happening are just one one in a trillion right human beings human hominids have been around for a very long time 3.7 million years how many beings have been on the planet over 3.7 mi million years quite a lot right so to have these footprints preserved like this is one in a trillion chance we, we've not had anything like this before um you know this this is this is amazing this is this is truly um energetically um without pale the best discovery that the leakies could have ever made this was this was worth louis leaky ending up in a hospital with sun sunstroke a decade earlier um, for his wife Mary to find these. So the toe life footprints again. Back to back to the other. I, I went right off text there, but I wanted to put my own take on it, as you know. So the toe life footprints. Um, the evidence of the theory of bipedalism. People were working, walking upright. Now, um, what what we do find is that they are of a type of. Australopithecus afarensis, and af afarensis um, is truly a hominid that um, does eventually evolve, like lots of these other Australopithecines, they, they evolve into different hominids. There's loads of Australopithecines at one stage. And one, one thing that I've, that, that I've forgotten to mention, right, which, which links in with what we just said earlier on, links in very well with what we just said earlier on, um, and there's a little chart here that, that I'm going to show you as well, um, which, which, which is brilliant. It just shows something that we did with the timeline um, um, 
last week. But um, it, it's it, it's it's so it, you know it, this this thing about bipedalism and you know we we've talked about when did hominids come down from trees and start wandering across landscapes and start sort of walking upright. We we do believe that people started walking upright at least maybe um, four mi four million years ago. I got a little bit of a chart in front of me. You know, we met the one thing that links with what we what we mentioned earlier on with the footprints about Neanderthals and Homo sapiens being around on the earth together and so on and so on. Um, the um, we do find evidence in caves in Africa where a certain type of Australopleiocene is actually wiping out another type of Australopleiocene, actively hunting it. Right. And and they basically said, well, that's obviously modern day humans do it now. No, when I say modern day humans, it's the ancestor of modern day humans, humans, because we're talking about a date over three million years ago where where hominids are feasting upon another hominid. Right. Henry. Can you find me evidence by next week of Homo sapiens eating Neanderthals? I'll have a little look. And I don't I don't I don't think the answer is going to be uh, no. You will find Neanderthals maybe feasting upon Neanderthals, but not um, Homo sapiens feasting upon Neanderthals. I think you'll get the answer. The answer is out there, and we'll have a little bit of a chat about that. Right. What I want us to do, right? I've remembered. I want to show you. A, I want to go to um, that. There's there's a there's a hominid timeline uh, which I which I do believe, uh, which I want to show you, which is which is quite brilliant. Um, I think it might be on here. I'm not exactly sure it is. There's a hominid timeline and, and it's not on here. It's absolutely brilliant. Unfortunately, I can't share it with you, which is a bit of a thing. Uh, but anyway, I've got this hominid timeline that, that, I, that I just got up on, on a, um, got up on Wikipedia. It's actually really good. Um, I wouldn't always advise using Wikipedia, but th this one's really good. And uh, it basically got a little bit of a timeline. Down the right, it's got advances in, human beings and in the middle it's got different types of hominids so what it's got it's got um australopithecus about four million years ago uh, earliest evidence of bipedalism beyond four million years ago earliest use of stone tools about at least 3.5 million years ago i would say at the same time these footprints 3.7 million years ago uh, homo habilis we've got first evidence of people leaving africa very interesting in excess around 2.5 million years ago where we got homo habilis coming out of africa but we're now getting evidence as you know out of africa of other earlier evidence now this this is a really interesting point and i don't know where this has come from and i and i need to look this up maybe one day in the future earliest evidence of rock art in africa probably san art from um the likes of um uh, south africa the earliest rock art two million years ago. I need to look that because that just sounds unbelievable. Earliest use of fires at least 1.5, um, if not um, 1.8 million years ago, right? So that's the first use of fire. And that also comes from South Africa as well. So again, what, let's, just, let's just try and, um, let's just try and um, muck around with these photographs. I mean, let's just put another one up on the screen. Um, let's just, uh, here we go. We can just, we, that's a good one, but I just want to go back. Um, and we're going to go, hang on, let's do that there. There's lots of images of these prints out there. Um, and you know, you, you've got, you've got this here. Um, let's just go with that one. That's it being uncovered. You can actually get an idea of the depth of these footprints. They, they are, they are, you know, they're not exactly on the surface, are they? So how Mary found these, I think she was sniffing around in the earth one day and she found them. Um, and at this point, Mary Leakey's eyes are like an eagle, right? Mary can work out the difference between something um, creamy yellow colour and something which is a creamy yellow colour, right? You know what I'm trying to say there, don't you? There's there's just such a, a, um, a minor contrast between a piece of human bone, hominid bone, and the surrounding rock. So trying to work out that there's going to be footprints here is something else. So 
we did know that the Latoli, the, um, we did know that um, Latoli had been a place to find evidence of mammal fossils, mammalia fossils, a lot earlier, right? Non-human uh, primates earlier, um, and you know this is um, this this is the thing you see. People were looking, but you know these footprints have not been found. Evidence by German archaeologists in 1939. They're finding um, um, hominid remains of pre-molars and molars in 1939. So this is all building to understand the tow line. Um, and there was excavations in 1959 by the Leakies and the tow line. But however, the landscape then went explored until 1974. It was just like, hey, OK, there's a few teeth, but there's no way they're going to find these footprints. There's no way ever they're going to find these footprints. These are not going to be found. This is one in a trillion chance. This would mean that Mary Leakey would have to cut, cut through every single layer, look through every... Oh, and also, also people, right? This is another really important point. The forming of these footprints is one in a trillion, right? Finding them, the odds, the odds are stacked against you. Um, you have to be Mary Leakey to find these. You have to be a goddess to find these. You, you've got to, <coughs> you've got to be unbelievably special. And also, not just that, people, but you've also got to have the layers available. So on top of all this, this crap, of crud, all built up, right? The layers have to be revealed via the geological erosion to be visible anyway, right? So if you want to talk about creation of these and then the odds of finding them right um if i if i was a betting man i would not bet i i i would it's it's likely that if everyone betted that these were going to be found right on the planet i think all of us other than mary leakey would lose the bet and i'm not going to cook i'm not going to do that so um when they when they originally found this we, we've got three um sets of hominids creating these footprints and it's it's very much understanding that the step length the stride uh, the foot angle the height of this individual um it was definitely a hominid we, we don't have apes that could do this you might have apes walking upright for a little distance right but not like this um and it, it, it's it's very they're very different from any prints that you would see involving a chimpanzee and a gorilla so do you know what we're going to do this is again I, I didn't do this did i i what i want to do is um is do a comparison between a chimpanzee footprint i know we've already seen a little bit of an image but i want to do a comparison of a chimpanzee footprint chim okay chimp chimp chimpanzee uh, chimpanzee, uh, there used to be this boy in school called Chimpy. I don't know why. He looked like a, he, he, he was a guy, looked a bit strange. Uh, Chimpa, we used to call him. Chimpanzee, uh, compare um, human footprints. Human, human footprint. Right, human footprint. Right, there we go. And there we go. Human footprint image uh do you see the difference um now if you're if you're gonna find um oh, let's let's just you can you can clearly see the difference between a gorilla gorilla's foot and a human footprint well, that that's clear but the weight displaced what you can see um is that you can see the footprint here where you've got the human footprint where you've got weight placed equally on the front and the rear here you've got um, either uh, with the one example of a print that we saw earlier on you had more weight placed into the digits at the front because they're using them that you need the strength to climb trees or or there's weight displaced at the back and unequal numbers but you can clearly see that there's an equal displacement uh, a displacement with the human foot and also with the with the with the chimpanzee, what you can clearly see um, is that uh, there's no equality of weight in those digits. There's equality of weight in our digits, 
but not the chimpanzee's digits. So that is clearly the big difference. And also, uh, chim chimpanzee, it's spread out. Ours is condensed into the format of a human foot. That's what I wanted to look at. So if we if we go away from that now and we just um, we go back with that there, the toe lie again. The, these these are some of the more modern. These 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 are the um, some of the more recent ones that have been found. Uh, and we'll keep these on the screen. Um, this will help us understand what's going on. So uh, an idea: what, how, how, how in, how in the world are we able to date these footprints? We can't use radiocarbon dating because radiocarbon um, deteriorates at a very rapid rate over fifty thousand years. These footprints are in are, are in rock. Right. For something to be formed in, in, in something solid like this in rock, it must be millions of years old, at least hundreds of thousands of years, at least, but millions of years old. Now, what they've done, they, they've looked at the surrounding landscape and they've, they've looked at the layers and they've, they've read one layer this year, this layer, blah, 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 and they've got all the way down. But that's not accurate enough. So what they've done, they've used a dating technique called potassium argon dating. Now, I've been meaning to do this for the past few weeks. And the way potassium argon dating works, we can do it quite quickly. We look at that layer. We look at the footprint. Right. We, we look at um, um, just basically under that, under the top patina layer there of the footprint. Right. Basically, the layer that the footprint's created in. Right. And um, what we then do, and then on top of that, you've got another layer and that create that that fossilizes it forever, basically. The word fossilized is a word that um, when somebody says, oh, it's fossilized that in, in, a, in a muddy, erodible layer, it's fossilized. What they're trying to say, there's a layer patina formed and it's created the outline. That's what fossilization in some contacts mean. Other fossilization means that it's turned to rock. So two different ways of looking at it. So basically what happens is, is this quick, quick. Potassium is found in felspars, micas, clay minerals, tephra, volcanic ash, all the type of um, sedimentary stuff that you find, right? All those little minerals. Keep that in your head. Um, potassium is found in those minerals that I've just mentioned, right? Easy. What happens is the isotope decays it gets less, there's less and less potassium over a period of time. And then eventually there's so little potassium, it's untraceable. And what the potassium turns into is argon, right? So when the potassium turns into argon and there's loads of argon, it means that the rock is very, very, very old. If there's loads of potassium in the rock, then the rock isn't very old. So what they found is that there's considerably less potassium in the rock from 3.7 million years ago than the rock dated from more recently, a million years ago. So, and to be honest with you, that's the best way I can describe potassium argon dating. In other words, if there's lots of potassium in the rock, then it's a newer rock. If there's very little potassium in the rock, it's bloody old thumbs up. And that's that's an easier way of that that's an easier way of describing potassium argon dating than you would do for radiocarbon dating. Uh, actually that, that was a walk in the park. Brilliant. I like that. It made sense. Even I understood that scientific uh, description. Just taking it um, from the, the I'm just putting those two notes together. That was good. When people try and explain these things on, on the internet, they just make it overcomplicated. It was like a wind turbine I created. It just everyone said, you've got, you've got to do this and that. And if I said, sod it. It's this way. And that's the way you do it. Test your margin data. And that's how that's the way it works. So what we got, we got lots of layers at the toe line. We've got to be very careful to work out that these footprints here, these footprints, I, I, did I say 150 meters away? These footprints here are probably from about the same date. So that's really good. So what we've got, and actually, they, they've got a mean average of the um, dating for this rock of about 3.7 million, give or take um, a few hundred thousand years either side. So 3.7 million years ago. Um, and 
and what what we what we do find is that um, these these hominids, uh, the footprints of these hominids that that were found, and and this the, this is this is a really kind of um, uh, th 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 there's been a bit of a debate which which volcano the ash came from, um, and and it, it's it's basically um, thought that uh, it was originally thought that the ash actually come from the Sadaman um, volcano. Um, but the ash is slightly different when they looked at it in 2011. So they do believe it, it came from another volcano nearby. Um, and basically that day when the ash rained across, it would have been in one day. That's it. When, when, I, I'm going to say that, not as an expert but gonna, as, as of geology, but I'm going to say that when you compare it with uh, the likes of uh, Vesuvius that erupted within a few hours, right? That's what happens. It's in a few hours. It's there. Volcano can't be asked to do any more. That's it. It's left on the landscape. Slightly different from Mount St. Helens that went up in New Zealand. Mount St. Helens in 1988, wasn't it? That went up for a, a couple of days. But it's very likely that this this rained on the landscape for about um, um, for, for a few hours and created a thick layer of 15 um, centimetres across the landscape. Um, so this, this was, this, this was like a, it probably it rained at the same time as that as well. And it was quite, quite hot, quite warm. Um, and then covered by another layer of ash, which sealed these footprints forever. So fine. Again, in my notes, again, it, it makes a look, it says about the, the, the real value of finding the other footprints of the antelope and the rhinos, um, alongside the hominids, which is absolutely great. Where were these people going? Were they actually going anywhere? Or were they going to a watering hole? Now, the, the experts sort of say, because there's lots of footprints around, right? Were all the animals and human beings, yeah, they were all together for a reason. Well, what, what would have led them to walk across um, fairly hot ash? It would, have been, it would have been still hot, you know? It would have been fairly hot still. Um, and with very sort of, um, I don't know, near boiling rain, that type of thing, right? So why did they take the trip across this just suddenly formed a layer? Why did all, they must have all been going somewhere. Maybe they were escaping, but they're not exactly running, are they? So were they going to a watering hole? What was going on? Was there a dead elephant nearby that they all wanted to feast off? Don't know, but they were all doing something at the same time, which which is very interesting, putting the animal aspect into there. So, the the one thing as well is um, we sort of knew about the other animals, um, you know, bones of maybe uh, wild boar and, and and other types of elephants and so on. We we knew about these some of these other animals, but we didn't have the footprints of them. And the other thing as well is having footprints of hares and birds which you're really not going to find the bones preserved at this type of level, maybe one or two, but not many. The footprints are all we, that we've got as survivors of some of those other animals. So what I'm going to do, uh, we will have a break in a moment, but we're going to finish our Latoli bit today. Then we're going to do Haysboro. We're going to have a very short break. But what I would like to do is the inter interpretation and significance. I've said about the interpretation of, and significance, but there's one point I've, I've completely missed the human brain, to walk upright, to have the height that we're talking about, um, was it um, 1.3 meters for, for females, uh, just over that for, for, for males. We're talking about a bigger brain. To walk upright, you need a bigger brain. To, to walk in a sequence, you need a bigger brain. To, to take care of walking, bigger brain. So a uh, human brain is evolving without, without the need for finding the human remains. So, um, so what we've got is that, um, you know, uh, we will eventually have the evolution of the human brain. It's not quite there, but, but uh, it, it's coming there. Um, some, some analysis, um, something, some people say that um, maybe if you look at the other footprints, right? This, this is a really interesting point, and I'm just going to chuck it in there, but I, I, I'm not going to say much more about this. Um, so what I need is, is those footprints there. Oh, come on. Right. Okay. This here. Yeah. What we're saying, what we're saying is that the footprints on the right. Yeah. Can you see on the, on, can you see on the left-hand side, it seems to be eking on the left-hand side. 
all the footprints on the left hand side that the, the footprint on the right uh, there's there's mud in, there's more of a rise on the uh, right left hand side the footprint on the left rise on the left hand side and it seems to be that it seems to be there's something on the left hand side right and one writer says that this is the telltale sign that somebody was carrying something on their left hand side this may suggest that an individual may have actually been carrying an infant so if that's the case why now this this man carried the infants when you think it's a woman carrying the infants um, I used to carry my daughter all the time. What we're saying, whoever was creating the footprints on the right was carrying something, but maybe they weren't carrying a child at all. Um, so the, the, the one thing, um, the one thing about finding these is, is again, just, just the, 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 the pure, the, 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 the pure chance the, the, the pure energy um I, I i need to say something else as well when when that little girl found that the, those two dinosaur footprints initially one on display in the museum eventually two when she eventually when she found them uh, around just just before she found them in january last year january the 25th and I, I i went there to identify them and all the rest you know that story other footprints have been found there. But I never understood the statement until I've been doing this this week, that those footprints there might be the only footprints that might ever be found on the Bendrix Rock in Barry. Just because we've got a load, it might have actually been complete chance when they were found in the layers that they were found. I found the Teleosaurus footprint, which is on a much higher le le level. But those footprints down on the Bendrix Rock in Barry, some still there, might be all that we will ever find um, in the history of humanity there. Or loads more might be found. Because this, these might be the only footprints ever found on the planet ever. This might be the only ones. These, these are so incredibly rare. And I've never thought of it that way before. And sometimes when you did give off, do these classes, uh, you guys assist me in seeing something truly amazing, truly spectacular. Um, so, the, the, so the other thing as well is the footprints impressions have been interpreted as the same as a human stride with the heel striking first and then a weight transfer to the ball of the foot before pushing um, off the toes. So basically the heel striking um, and then the, the weight goes into the ball. You know, there it is on your heel, goes into the ground to create that. And your toes go forward to strike off. Now, I have known, I have known some women to actually use their toes to walk forward. Um, some actors um, in some kind, uh, some actors in Chinese martial arts use their toes, right? But in the main, most of us use the balls uh, of, our, of our feet to, to strike the ground first and then to move off with our toes. That's a pure hominid characteristic, human characteristic, just like these wonderful footprints. And what we will say about this landscape, look at that there, love it. What we will say about this landscape, alongside living with all these other wonderful beasts, we know that from the other evidence that we found, the other sedimentary evidence, being that it was slightly moist, being that there's lots of animals around, that this would have been a grassland-like landscape. So I'm going, to, I'm going to read out this last bit, then we're going to um, have the questions about Latoli, and then we're going to do Haysborough. And then uh, a very short break, five minute break. I'll do a cup of tea here. Um, my cup of tea's gone cold because I've been talking too much thanks to Henry's constant interruptions today. <laughs> You've let me down, Henry. I haven't been able to drink my tea. <laughs> Go on, get on with it. In no, shut up. That's what Goff says. In 1979, the Latoli footprints, um, the other, um, they were finally released to the world. 1979, four years Mary Leakey kept her under a hat for four years. 
and uh, Mary, um, they, they were found and then they were reburied. They were reburied um, soil on top um, and acacia trees planted on top. But unfortunately, they then realized that the acacia tree roots might damage the Latoli footprints. Um, and, in, and then they found out that the acacia trees were just about to cause some damage to the footprints. So they removed the acacia trees. And what they then did, that they, they, were, they, re, uh, they um, put, took new cast to them so they could be seen in the museum, right? Uh, Remolded and recast. Um, and then they put a membrane across the site and then soil was placed on top and then they would be preserved. In 1993, this happened. The original tracks, um, we've got the new moles. Team of specialists um, um, started to look at ways that they can try and help the footprints. So the membrane was placed across the site so that they, the footprints could breathe. Uh, but the membrane would stop tree roots damaging them. Uh, proposals for lifting the track and moving it to an enclosed area have been suggested, but the cost is viewed as outweighing the benefits. The process would require much research, a large amount of money, and there is a risk of loss or damage. Thus, burial seems to be the most effective methods of preservation. But you know what? If this was in China, the Chinese would have built a massive aircraft hangar over it. Um, and you would be able to see them in situ today, but this is in China. But mind you, the Chinese are investing massively in Tanzania at this minute, and maybe they might do that. Good old Chinese, because they got a, I tell you what, I got a lot, lot of respect for Chinese archaeologists because they, they, they find something and they, and, and it, they breathe, they love it. Like, like Peking man, they, they put a lot of investment into their archaeology. Let's see what happens in the future. But, um, you know, I'm not, one person to travel so I, I i would never go out and see these but uh it's a good good thought that isn't it so what we're gonna do we're gonna we're gonna have our break now and uh we're gonna stop the screen sharing very very short break because um uh, I, I want to finish um i want to finish a little bit um earlier today so any um henry any questions uh no well finding that really interesting i mean what the staggering thing is how they actually ever found it. Yeah, it, 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 it's so it staggering. Across. Yeah, it, it's it's so, so staggering. And uh, I, I've not realised this until I've looked at it. I've really not realised it. I've not realised this until I realised that the dinosaur footprints in Barry are so, so rare. But we had, we had, uh, just do a comparison. Dinosaurs have roamed the earth um, at least beyond 200 million years ago. Um, and they went to around 66 million years ago, right? And, and obviously some did survive, won't go there. But that's an incredible period of time for dinosaurs to be roaming the planet. O over one and a half, uh, 150 million years that dinosaurs have been roaming the planet. Human beings have only been roaming the planet in one form or another for um, five, six million years. That's a very short period of time. We find dinosaur footprints, but they are incredibly rare, but that's over a long period of time. Finding these footprints, at Latoli is beyond rare. There's no, there's no word for it. Um, and I, I, I don't think you could bet on finding these. I, the odds of finding these are probably, um, I'm going to say it, 14 trillion to one. So I'm going to double the chance that these have of being preserved by two. So 14 trillion. But I bet your bottom dollar an Irish uh, person would win the bet. <laughs> it's true though isn't it it's true you get this Irish guy everyone's betting forever and there's this Irish guy in good old Dublin he's saying right Ireland's going to beat Wales 10,000 points to zero and he wins it it's an Irish guy that's what happens Lucky the that's, Irish. Because, that's because Joshua Navidi Joshua Navidi never played that day that's why I don't even did Joshua sure? play on the weekend do you know if he did? I don't know. No, anyway. he didn't. Didn't yeah, that's you? why they lost. Exactly. That's he my point. That's why they lost. Um, right. If is that is that's everything from you, Henry. Um, for the very short break, no more than five minutes. Go kettle and then back in. A uh, golf. Anything? No, that's very, very interesting. Thank you. Right. So I'm going to have this very very short break, and I will be back very very shortly.
Back to it, brothers and sisters. May we embrace prehistory. Are you there, Henry? Hello? My brethren, are you all there? Yes. I don't know where that um, that, that English person's gone. Go. <laughs> there he is. Is he? He's in the room. You... <clears throat> Well, Goff is originally from London. He's, a, he's English through and through. I might be out. I was born here. <laughs> anyway, let's crack on. <laughs> so, one thing I wanted to do was, um, was an unusual site now. And I'm just going to mention what we're going to be doing next week as well. So uh, next week, we're going to be looking at... Um, Oh God, I got it. My oh, a subject that I really don't want to do because it's so controversial. It's called Pavlan Cave. So that's what we're going to be doing next week. Um, so I just wanted to look at. Uh, so we've done our Lato Lie today. So that's that's done and dusted. Uh, that was that was a really nice sesh. So um, I want us to look at um, a site known as Pakefield, and Pake Pakefield is is a rather, um, it comes to us today via uh, an article in front of me, which, which I'm going to read. And then we'll look at some artifacts in a museum and then we will go on to something else, which will be Haysborough finally. On this beach 700,000 years ago, one wintry day, two keen fossil collectors found a flint beneath these cliffs. It's on the east um, Suffolk coastline, the, 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 the east of England, basically. And on the foreshore at Pegfield, up on old Lower Stock, Suffolk, at, um, on a wintry day, they found some really interesting fossils exposed. And these fossils exposed date, the, these, these flints themselves, let's call these, these flints, uh, the, these fl flints uh, dated to um, at least 700 thousand years ago and along that part of the coastline they have actually been finding since about 2000 various animal bones that were ex extensively um, thought unthought of so animal bones dated back half a million years years old and they also found in 2000 a uh, hand axe that dated to half a million years years old. Now this is off the east coastline of England. This means that we had human ancestors here half a million years ago. Remember, this is this is um, 80 odd years after mathematics, 88 years after uh, the Piltdown Man forgery in 2000. So in other words, um, there were people here half a million years ago, except Piltdown Man was a forgery. But if, he, if it had been done properly, we would have come to the same conclusion. It's only taken a long, long time to actually prove that people were here half a million years ago. Um, now, this this hand axe probably belonged to something known as Homo heidelbergensis, which we've already mentioned. Now, again, what they what they were finding, what they have been finding at Pakefield in particular, what they've been finding at Pake, Pakefield in particular since 2005-2006, are flints that do not only date back to half a million years ago, date back to 700,000 years ago. Little bits of flint that um, we will show an image of. I, I think we've got one image of them there. They're very crude looking, much more cruder than this hand axe, but again, flints that have been napped and created and formed by the hand of man. So we can we can see this from from the coastline um, and what's happening is along the coast, bit by bit, the coast is disappearing and eroding into the sea. So what I'm going to do now, before we look at Haysborough, I want to show you some of these images from uh, the Milden Hall Museum. And we, we, I think we got one image of, of some of these flints there. So let's just go straight on to that. Let's just see where we go. And a partridge in a pear tree. 
I was nearly late for the lecture today because I started talking to a woman. I had a handload of my books and I flogged her a copy of one of my books. I was dead impressed. It's amazing what happens on the road here. It's great. I can, can do all sorts. Cups of tea from people in BT, vans, sell my books. Wonderful. So, right, okay, we want to move the Latoli there away. We want to no more Latoli. Got Latoli. This is it here. And now, the rather interesting website, as you open on their website, it's got some, um, it's got some really nice descriptions. And um, there, hang on, hang on, if I can, should have had that image up there. Let's just, um, let's just type that pig field. Just put that up there, Pakefield. We'll look at those images of those Im of, of those individuals now. Pakefield, um, Flint, 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 Flint tools. There you go. There they are. There they are. These these are types of um, these are actually dating um, from the Neolithic period, right? But what we've got, Pakefield themselves, um, these ones here. You can see that they look actually quite much cruder, but these date back to 700,000 years ago. Um, and this is what makes the site extremely remarkable. So in other words, you know, even if the Piltdown Man forgery wasn't a forgery, today we would be able to find evidence in Britain dating back 200,000 years older than the Piltdown Man forgery purported to be from. So these finds themselves in, in their own right. There we go, lots more of them there. This is the evidence that they've been finding eroding away from that cliffside. There they are, that's the very, very early evidence. But what I want us to do is go, go to um, that website. So here we go, Mildon Hall Museum. It goes, there we go, they're really happy within that landscape. <laughs> from the evidence at hey, um, um, Haysboro, of which we'll go on to in a short while, Haysboro evidence is 100,000 years older than um, Pakefield, from the uh, Paleolithic period, the, um, uh, uh, the low, lower Paleolithic period. So what we've got from that one stack of evidence along that part of the coastline, we get evidence of Homo hydrobergensis, Homo erectus, at least two hominids going back to at least 1.8 million years ago at Pakefield, 1.7 million years ago on the Suffolk coast. And then we're overwhelmed by the archaeological data that's coming from there. There we go. Nearby, I, I, um, I not mentioned this before, um, there's one of our Neanderthals. It just looks, it looks exactly like Henry. It really does. Uh, the, this Neanderthal evidence across that coastline, um, paper, takes, it does look like you, doesn't it? Um, it, it, it that's a mirror image. Uh, at Linford, because I know your missus likes men who are really butch looking, so that's you, Henry. Take as a compliment. So Linford Quarry, which is um, in Norfolk, um, 12 miles away from Milner Hall, uh, we've got evidence of our Neanderthals. We've got evidence of Neanderthal axes, tools, and, and evidence of butchered woolly mammoths. Um, and there we go. I, I love that bit. They chuck that in the, to the display um, as, as home in its day, 2.5% um, um, Neanderthal DNA in this. I love it. So we're getting that. We're getting all. So in other words, the east coastline of Britain is full of all that wonderful archaeology that takes us way, way back. And obviously, then evidence, evidence of our modern hominids. So what we're going to do now, finally today, um, uh, before we finish today, we're going to look at Haysborough. Now, there is Haysborough. Now, the evidence at Haysborough is, is again, um, spectacular. Do you know, folks, you know what I said earlier on that, you know, I said earlier on that we've got, um, uh, that, that we've got evidence of flint. We've got evidence of bones. When we look, looked at Boxgrove, we had evidence of a human bone, human tibia, um, and we've got evidence of, of the, of the uh, various tools. But Haysborough, guess what we found? I did say today was a lecture of two sets of footprints. 
a lecture of two cities, Haysborough Footprints. The Haysborough Footprints as well. There's Haysborough. It's, it's sort of always been, uh, if you want to go with this plan, sort of coastal-ish. So if we, if we look at these footprints, nothing, nothing much to see. This is where they've been found eroded in muddy layers along the coast. They, they laminated layers. So basically it's been formed in the muds. Uh, a laminate of minerals has formed over the top and then other muds have washed in and you get layer upon layer upon layer going all the way through the ages. The archaeological evidence from this locality takes us back to 800,000 years ago. And I hopefully you're seeing these images on the screen now. So the evidence at Haysborough takes us back to 2013, a very um, short time ago. And these footprints were formed alongside a great river um, going out to the great sea as it would have been back then. Um, and they would have been walking along the muds and sediments alongside this great river. Now, there's more chance that we're going to find evidence from... 30,000 years ago or 20,000 years ago or 10,000 years ago of human footprints preserved in muds along that coastline. We've got some at Goldcliff. We've got some which only dates to uh, uh, the Goldcliff stuff, I think it's about 8,000 years ago. The stuff off the coastline at uh, Borth, uh, Cardigan, uh, that, that dates um, a bit closer in time than that, in the muds, right? But finding evidence preserved in muds and then all the geological layers being found on top of it and then being exposed is probably um, one in about a 10 billion chance. So these have actually been found. Um, and these date to 100,000 years ago. Now, the unfortunate thing about these, when these were actually found in May the 13th, um, 2013, it took a while for people to actually get out there and record them. And, and they were covered back up by the muds and silt. But they were re revealed again on the 7th of February, 2014. I've just got to um, clear some stuff a minute. Hang on a minute. Uh, they, they were found in, um, on the 7th of February. Uh, they were refound on the 7th of February, 2014. And they were identified as being very important. They shouldn't have been ignored. They, 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 they should have been researched a lot sooner. Um, and they were they were re-looked at on the 7th of February 2014, right? And, and they, they, they were researched. And unfortunately, within a short period of time, um, the footprints were eroded into the sea and lost forever. So so the one the one thing about the, the one thing about the footprints at Haysborough um, is that they they are internationally important. They they give evidence of um, those people in Britain um, and the animals that they hunted and all the rest of it. Um, and I've just I've, I've just um, read my notes slightly wrongly. Um, they were announced as being found on the 7th of February 2014. Um, there's a little bit of delay in researching them, but um, they, they were um, originally discovered in 2013, a little bit of time. And then 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 they did research. And not so long after that, they were eroded into the sea. Just needed to make that correction. So the Haysborough discovery um, is evidence of some of the oldest human footprints ever found on the planet. The Haysborough discovery of footprints are the oldest footprint discovery found in Britain. Um, you know, the closest date of footprints found in Britain takes us back to, as, as I've said, around 8,000 years ago, right? But these ones... Um, if you put a, if you a couple of notes on, are so, so old, they're so, so important. Um, and that's the thing. So the, 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 Haysborough, the, the Haysborough footprints have really gained um, some notability within archaeological circles. There's evidence of, of these footprints being found by, by accident, then them being recorded, and then they were then lost and eroded into the sea. The one, the one thing that archaeologists have to make the decision, um, you can see where all the other geological layers are formed on top of these beds. Um, all that has, has naturally been eroded away, right? And strangely enough, the layer that these were found in is still there, was still there in 2013. Um, so by chance, they, they caught the eye and they were recorded. The archaeologists had to make a decision. 
And the decision was, do they lift them and, and risk them all sort of, um, uh, uh, you know, basically go into pulp by the time they get to uh, the museum uh, and distort and all the rest of it? Or do we keep them there, record them, and then risk them being lost by the sea? We kept them there. Um, we recorded them. We, we basically, they found approximately 50 footprints in an area of 40 square metres and 12 were largely complete, really intact, showing the details of the, and two showing the details of the, the toes in particularly, the, the full length of the foot. Um, unfortunately, they, they were eroded away um, and now they've become lost. But we have got, uh, we, we, we've, they've been recorded, they used a technique, um, a high level of, of um, photogrammetric recording and when pho photogrammetic re recording uh, does is take the layers so you've got you've got a map um, a, a stratigraphic map as you take the photographs of all these hollows in the mud now the individual it was identified that uh, we've we've got at least five individuals from the prince it was a family group in, of adults and children we're not going to go in whether they were male or female but obviously it was a family grouping um, larger feet for the much larger adults and smaller feet for the much um, smaller children. Some, are, some of the footprints measured um, just under, um, um, wow, this, this, is, this is quite, you know, I've got to get that right. Um, some, some of them me measured um, uh, 14 centimetres in length, others measured 260 centimetres in length, right? So that's the big, big feet of the adults and the 14 centimetres in length um, are of the children. Um, and lo and behold, they managed to get the heights of the individuals as, as well, just like the Latola, they managed to get heights. Um, I know there's a difference in range. The Latola are, are 3.7, these are 800,000. But the one thing about the heights, we do know that the smaller children, um, that the smaller footprints represented individuals of just under a metre in height, so little ditty children, um, and then <coughs> the others represented adults that were probably 1.7 meters in height. Um, and interesting enough, if you want to do the 1.7 meters in height, that equates to <coughs> five foot seven inches, which is precisely my height. I'm precisely five foot seven inches. So these people were, were as tall as me and I as tall as them 800,000 years ago. So to talk about people being smaller in the past than today is, is always a nonsense. Now, who were these people? Were they, were they Homo erectocenes? Were they Homo habilis? Were they Neanderthals, Homo sapiens sapiens? Who were they? What well, we do know that uh, we do think that they were a form of hominid known as Homo antecessor, which means which means a, an early hominid, um, Homo antecessor, and we do believe from other evidence. Um, that we found of homo hominid remains elsewhere on the planet, um, that these may have originated from Spain. We, 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 we've got bones and, and sort of structures of bones that um, if, if you managed to do a reconstruction would, would fit nicely into the footprints of these individuals. So, um, so we're, coming, we're, we're coming close to the end today. Um, so, so there, there's, there's as some of the footprints were. So the Hay Haysborough site is too old to do radiocarbon dating. But what they've done is another data dating technique. Not only looking at stratigraphy associated with the surrounding cliffside, they've done another dating technique. So this, this is, this is new. This is, this was a new one to me when I looked at it. It's known as paleomagnetism. And what paleomagnetism is, is held in the muds. Um, held in the muds um, and magnetic signatures with the ions. And obviously the, those, those iron oxides formed in the muds um, form uh, as being a different magnetism than today, paleomagnetism. That's how they worked it out. So obviously a different um, magnetic field in the past than it is today. So they, 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 they've looked back on that. Um, it's also said as well that the footprints might be even older than 800 million years ago. They're at least 800 million years ago. Oh God, that, that's wrong. Not even the 800,000 years ago. They, they believe they're much older than 800,000 years ago because they may actually, um, they do think that the magnetic field 
um, um, could have been, you know, they, they think they're a lot older than that. And there is one other thing as well, is what they found associated with the layer was that the teeth of little voles. Now we've mentioned voles being important to archeological dating before. They found the teeth of voles and we do know that at this time when the footprints were created, there was a certain type of vole around. And these vole, the, the evidence of these teeth might indicate that the, the footprints again are a lot older than the um, paleo archeologists think. Couldn't, wouldn't that be great? As I said earlier on, the footprints might date back to as far as 950,000 years ago or a million years ago. So that, that's, that, that's the, the, the massive context. What they found is that the people actually living um, associated with these these footprints from the um, the evidence of um, microflora and microfauna and um, evidence of various pollens and so on. We do believe that um, the people lived within a grassy, open valley surrounded by pine forests, um, a climate similar to Scandinavia today. And they, they, they do believe that this type of landscape would have been inhabited by mammoths, rhinos, giant deer, bison, saber-toothed tigers, wolves, hyenas, lots of the evidence that we've already looked at before in that list of mainly now today extinct species. So again, the climate that these people lived in alongside this muddy mar margin that we've got these really perfectly preserved footprints was a landscape similar to Scandinavia and Sweden today. So the one thing I want to do is change that image and hopefully, hang on, is it gonna come up? Bingo, bingo. This is, the, this is the last one today. So Haysborough has produced a number of significant archaeological finds. So we've got the evidence of animal, uh, animal remains and now footprints and, and the flints and so on. Strangely <coughs> enough, I know, I know we mentioned uh, 2000, but people have been thinking about this landscape since 1820 because out off the coastline, People have been trawling up elephant bones, rhino bones, giant deer bones, all those extinct species bones off the coastline. Um, and out there, um, there was a very low tide in February 1825. And they actually found the remains of fossilized tree stumps. Don't really know when these fossilized tree stumps actually date from. Um, but the one thing as, as well is, is that those fossils, because the coastline has eroded probably a kilometer since um, 1825, those, those, all those fossilized tree stumps are well washed away or now sedimented up. And, and what we can, what we do know is that th those, those woodland and from the other evidence more recently that they had oaks, elm, beeches, birches and willows living within that landscape. 1870, they found, they found, um, they, they found some bones, animal bones. Um, they weren't examined. In 1999, those animal bones were examined and it turned out that some of those animal bones showed telltale signs of cut marks from different periods. So we do know that people are living within that landscape for a very, very long time. This is a black flint hand axe. And this dates from, this, this date, we do believe, this is the one that was found in 2000. Uh, they say that this dates from uh, around 700,000 uh, 700, years ago. Some say it dates to 800,000 years ago. Uh, and again, this is believed to be one of, one of the, the great oldest uh, relics that we have in, in the country going back to these footprints. So what, what we find is that not only do we find the footprints, there is a, other evidence going back more or less a, a million years, um, other types of evidence from this hominid that we haven't mentioned before called Homo antecessor, early hominid, um, early human, or whatever way you want to look at it. Um, an early ancestor, in other words, a, a proto-ancestor. So archaeologists are hoping to reconstruct the environment um, in which the footprints were made by analyzing remains of flora and fauna. We do know so far, in closing, that we're alongside the footprints, um, there are bits of bone and other evidence of 15 species of mammals, some we've mentioned, evidence of 100 different species of plants and 
over 106, 160 species of insects so far recovered. So we're hoping that we can completely um, have a reconstruction of what the landscape looked like, which these humans would have lived alongside. On that note, folks, um, are there any questions? And there's Haysborough. Are there any questions from uh, you today, um, Goff? No, I was uh, very interested. That's a whole new, um, whole sort of new subject for me. I, I hadn't thought about uh, these footprints before. It's, it's very good. Thank you. Yeah, a nice comparison of, uh, was good as well. Thank you. Um, and uh, just hopefully you're with us next week, Goff. So we'll find what Henry's got to say. Go on, Henry. No, that, that was very good. I found actually this uh, a really good session today. You always find it a really good session. You just say that one session was crap, but uh, um, that's because I wasn't I, teaching I, it. I have sent you a few messages. <laughs> All right, have you? All right, hang on, in the box. Oh, yeah, let's do these messages now. Let's do that input. Right, okay. Uh, here we go. Tried looking for the Homo sapien eating Neanderthal. Came back with no real matches for that yet. You've got a whole week. So there you go. How old are the footprints off Goldcliff, Newport? Probably up to about 8,000 years old. Um, Natural History Museum have pushed back um, the date to 950,000 years. So as we've been saying, can a, cannibalism uh, look at Goth's Cave, Cheddar Gorge, back around uh, 14,500 years ago? We will be doing um, Cheddar Gorge and we will be looking at that and we'll be looking at... Um, Goat Hole Cave on the Gower, Cat Hole. Uh, we'll be looking at Kent Cavern as well um, on the South Coast. So all these different things we'll be looking at. So thanks for that. But you still got a whole week to find any other information. So next week we will be uh, we will be looking at if I if I can remind myself, Pavlan Cave and the Lady of Pavlan Cave, and I'll be ripping the evidence apart so much that you'll come out of the lecture thinking, why the hell did we do that? But that's what we're doing next week. <laughs> okay. So, so any other questions, Goff or Henry? No, no, that, today? that's it. Thank no, you, Goff and you. Henry. Okay. Uh, thanks for your contribution. I'll see you next week. Have a nice week. Stay safe and have a, have a good Stay week. Stay safe, Henry and Goff. Bye. Bye-bye. Stay safe, Henry. Bye. Bye-bye. See you, mate. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Your book's on its way. Anyway, um, those questions as well about, um, you know, tried looking for the homo sapien eating Neanderthal, came back with no real match. Hopefully see that next one, next uh, Thursday at 10.30. How old are the footprints off Goldcliff, Newport, Wales? Probably between about six and a half, eight thousand years ago. Natural History Museum have pushed back to um, 950,000 years ago from 850,000 at Haysborough. Cannibalism, look at Goss Cave, Cheddar Gorge back around 14,500 years ago. Massive stuff there, love it. So anyway, thanks for uh, liking and um, subscribing. Um, and uh, don't forget to uh, continue to like and subscribe and, and watch my channel. Uh, it's Archaeology, um, Carl J. Langford. Uh, well, you got it. This is why you're here. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to press the blue button at the bottom to join. Thank you very much. We'll end the recording now. There we go.